so therefore that is cn and uh, the question is that is there a closed formula right so this is something we can uh, see can see you know can we find a closed formula so for each k there are k ways to plan the uh, right so as we mentioned right k ways to plan the uh, uh, combinator of spot with one holiday and uh, uh, therefore the generic function right we can find separately is uh, for this right the counting sequence is uh, summation k greater than equal to 1 k into x raised to k right which is the generic function and then similarly generic function for uh, the uh, l choose two ways to plan uh, two labs in l days right l is equal to n minus k uh, and uh, that is v of x which is summation l greater than equal to 2 l choose 2 into x ratio because we need at least two days to choose uh, from the uh, for the labs so therefore uh, we have uh, these two generative functions and we know the product of the generative functions will give us uh, the uh, so if you can solve independently for this we can use that to get a closed formula for c of x so that is the idea So what is a of x? a of x is uh, x into uh, summation k greater than equal to 0, k plus 1 x raised to x, right, because I take 1 uh, outside. And this we already know, right, which is uh, x by, uh, uh, which is 1 by 1 minus x whole square, right. So summation k plus 1 x raised to k is 1 by 1 minus x whole square. And then with uh, the x outside, I get x by 1 minus x whole square. Similarly, b of x is summation l greater than equal to 2, l choose 2 into x raised to l which if you remember, you know, if you take the derivative once, right, uh, you will get uh, uh, n plus 1 into x raised to uh, n minus 1. Now, if you take the derivative twice, you will get n into n, uh, you know, n into, uh, not n plus 1, uh, n into x raised to n minus 1. So, I will get n into n minus 1 into x raised to n minus 2, right. So, therefore, I will get uh, l into l minus 1 into x raised to l minus 2. Uh, uh, into x ray uh, 12 minus 2 uh, and now I can take the uh, you know uh, l in 12 minus 1 by 2 I can take the 2 outside um, right so I will get x square by 2 so I can write this l choose 2 as uh, you know summation uh, and, and uh, taking x square outside I will get x square by 2 into summation l greater than equal to 2 l in 12 minus 1 into x ratio l minus 2 but this uh, the second part right which is the part inside the summation is precisely uh, x by 1 minus uh, uh, x uh, whole cube right so because uh, because uh, the derivation uh, you know derivative of uh, the the derivative of uh, uh, derivative of 1 by uh, 1 minus x uh, 3 times right so, uh, no, no, 1 by 1 minus x whole cube, which is the derivative of uh, 1 by 1 minus x, uh, the second derivative, uh, the third derivative, right? No, second derivative. So, therefore, uh, I will get uh, uh, x square by 1 minus x whole cube as b of x. So, therefore, uh, so what do I have? I, I have... I have summation L greater than equal to 2, L choose 2 into x raised to L, which I wrote as summation L greater than equal to 2, L into L minus 1 into x raised to L minus 2 with x square by 2 outside. And uh, this is the second derivative of, uh, you know, the, uh, the series uh, summation x raised to L, right? And therefore, Right. This is the second derivative of uh, 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 summation x raised to n, which is by, uh, you know, the generative function of this, uh, you know, the, the way to represent this is 1 by 1 minus x. So, it's a second derivative is 1 by 1 minus x whole cube. And therefore, I get uh, this as uh, 2 by 1 minus x whole cube, right? Yeah. So, 1 by 1 minus x, the derivative is 1 by 1 minus x whole square, but then its derivative is 2 by 1 minus x whole cube. 
and uh, therefore uh, i will have uh, i will have uh, uh, x square by 2 into this will be x square by 1 minus x plus 2 so that's how i wrote right okay so then the uh, c of x by uh, the product rule uh, right, that i know uh, is that a of x into b of x which is x cube by 1 minus x all raised to 5 but now 1 minus x all raised to 5 right uh, we can uh, find out by uh, taylor series expansion and then we need to shift the uh, degree by 3 by right, because there is an x cube So, which is, I can write as x cube into summation and uh, greater than 0, n plus 4 choose 4 into x raised to 5. Okay. This is again by uh, you know, taking derivative uh, 5 times, we can show that this is precisely the case. And uh, therefore, I, I take the uh, x cube inside. This I can write as summation n greater than 3, right? Because uh, from 0, I, I shift by uh, 3. And therefore, n plus 4 becomes n plus 1, right? So, uh, n becomes uh, n plus uh, 3, right? So, therefore, n plus 4, uh, uh, choose 4 into x ratio. So, therefore, the coefficient of uh, x ratio n is n plus 1, choose 4. And uh, therefore, I have a formula for cn, right? Which is n plus 1, choose 4. So, summation k equal to 1 to n minus 2, k into n minus uh, k choose 2 is uh, equal to n plus 1, choose 4. So, I can, I can solve now this summation uh, also, right? So I get uh, I, I get uh, a close formula for the summation, which uh, uh, otherwise would be much more uh, difficult to come up with. Okay, so you can try this without using the energy function if you want to do this. And similarly, uh, you know the product uh, actually helps to compute these things easier. That if you had the uh, you know this summation, uh, then you use the energy function method, it will be slightly more difficult. Now, if you rem remember uh, your uh, partitions, right? So let us define the number of partitions, right, uh, of uh, the integer n into parts of size at most uh, k. Okay. So and denoted by p dash of n k as the number of such partitions. Okay. So we want to partition, but then each part has size at most k. Now we want to uh, show that the uh, generative function for this uh, sequence uh, p uh, dash of nk is uh, product i equal to 1 to k 1 by 1 minus x raised to n. Okay, summation n greater than 0 p dash of nk x raised to n is product i equal to 1 to k 1 by 1 minus x raised to n. So this is the generative function for uh, the partitions of n into parts of size at most k. So let us try to do this. So what is given to us is product i equal to 1 to k 1 by 1 minus x raised to y. So let us write it as product of uh, uh, series, right? So I have 1 by 1 minus x raised to y for i equal to 1 to k. Each one gives a separate series. So therefore I get first one is when i equal to 1, 1 plus x plus x square plus etc. Then when i is equal to 2, I will get 1 plus x square plus x raised to 4 plus etc. And similarly, when i is equal to k, I get 1 plus x raised to k plus uh, x raised to 2k plus etc. Right? Now, what is the coefficient of x raised to n right? uh, from here? Right? Coefficient of x raised to n is of the form. Right, if you if you if you look at this uh, product, coefficient of x raised to n is of the form. From the first, uh, you will get let's say uh, some uh, t1, right? Uh, because uh, you know the coefficient of uh, right uh, x raised to n, I can say that it you know from the first time it comes as like t1 times one. The second time it comes as because it's a, a multiple of two, it's a t2 times two, right? Two times t2. Then from the third one, it is uh, 3 t3, etc. From the kth one, it is k t k, right? But now, this whole uh, sum should be equal to n, right? So, you, from the first, it, you will get, let us say, if you are taking the uh, 
the uh, t1th power right so it is basically x raised to t1 right so t1 plus second one if i take the t2th term then i will get 2 times t2 right in the coefficient right 2 t2 similarly uh, tk time if i take from the uh, last one then i will get k times tk as the uh, exponent so and some of these exponents must be equal to n because we are looking at the coefficient of x raised to n now <laughs> this is this is how i get the coefficient of x raised to n in this product right from anywhere I, if i get x raised to n this is how it is going to come now uh, i want to see this in a different way okay so the first one is basically 1 plus 1 plus 1 etc t1 times right which is 1 times t1 right and 2 times t2 is 2 plus 2 plus 2 etc t2 times and the k times tk is k plus k plus etc tk times so this choice i can see as choosing right t1 copies of 1 t2 copies of 2 and tk copies of k and all of them sum to n and the maximum value is k so therefore this generative function actually represents the, uh, 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 the partition of n where each part is at most k on the other hand we can also see something else right so uh, each partition right uh, you can see that uh, uh, clearly correspond to a product right because the uh, uh, because given a, a, a partition we can basically say that you know like take the uh, number of times uh, i appears and uh, uh, this uh, is a choice of uh, you know uh, x raised to i times uh, that number right and that for I, I get a one to one correspondence in between uh, these two so i get this now I can also look at so this is a, this is a more interesting part of looking at the generative function. This we observed earlier, but uh, let us put it again. So if you want to look at one times t one, two times t two, k times t k as parts. So each of these I can see as uh, you know instead of looking at this one as uh, the parts, right? One 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 two 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 etc as parts, and at most uh, uh, k right value at most k. I can also see the same summation as right uh, one times t1 is a part right so it comes and two times t2 is a part three times t, uh, t3 is a part etc k times tk is a part so i can also see this as the number of ways of decomposing n into parts uh, at most k parts right because there cannot be more than k times here so therefore we get a partition of n into at most k parts and this agrees with our you know as i mentioned our earlier observation that uh, you know the number of ways of partitioning n into right partitioning the integer n into uh, at most k parts is precisely uh, the number of ways of uh, partitioning uh, where each size uh, is at most k so as a corollary we can also get the generative function for uh, p of n which is the partition of n right summation n greater than 0 p n of x raised to n is product i equal to uh, or k equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 1 minus x raised to k because here we are not putting any restrictions on the number of parts right so k can vary from 1 to infinity it can be anything but of course you know once the k exceeds n you will see that you know this will uh, uh, not give you any coefficient of x raised to n therefore we don't have to worry about that but for every n we have this so therefore i can define the uh, summation overall in real zero pn of x raised to n as product k equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 1 minus x raised to k so this is a nice way to uh, come up with the generative function for related things now a uh, uh, homework question okay so show that the generating function for uh, partition of n into distinct parts p n comma dist right uh, is equal to the number of ways of partitioning n into odd parts okay so p n odd is uh, denoting p n odd is denoting the number of ways of partitioning n into odd parts so each part is odd and uh, and uh, 
and uh, p n distinct is the number of isopartitioning partitioning n into distinct parts so each part is distinct and these two uh, are 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 the are the uh, are, are identical so this is what uh, you want to show the generative functions are the same so and using this show that there is a bijection between the corresponding sets of course that uh, comes uh, immediately so uh, we need to show that the generative functions for these two are the same <coughs> second question ask you to uh, solve the recurrence uh, relation cn is equal to summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 ca into c n minus 1 minus i where n is at least 1 with the c0 is equal to 1 as the initial condition so find c of x and then uh, deduce the formula for cn as the coefficient of uh, x raised to n in c of x right so this is what uh, you should do Okay. Now we are going to look at the composition of generative functions. Okay. So when I, what I mean by composition is that I can substitute uh, one uh, function uh, instead of the variable of the other function. So if I have like for example a of x and b of x, then I can talk about a of uh, b of x, right? So x becomes b of is replaced by B of x. So wherever x appears in A, I replace it with the B of x. So then what happens uh, according to uh, the uh, you know the uh, the combinatorics, and that is the uh, question that we want to look at. So let A n be the number of ways to build, let us say, a type A structure on an n element set. Okay. So we have an n element set. Then I want to look at the number of ways to build a type A structure on this. Then on the empty set, we assume that there is no type A structures that you can build, okay? Because this is this is a necessary assumption because uh, as you will see, when we are going to substitute this inside, you will see that if you can you can make empty structures out of uh, out of a set, then you have uh, you know uh, you have a way to uh, way too many. Uh, uh, objects that you can make out of and then it will not it will not become a converging uh, sequence so what we will do is that uh, we will assume that a0 is 0 right so on, on empty uh, set you cannot make any structure of type a then bn uh, let us say uh, denote the number of ways to build type b structure on an n element set and uh, b0 is uh, 1 okay so this assumption is not strictly necessary but uh, it will uh, be uh, good for us in this uh, time. Okay. So the B0 equal one is not really necessary, but uh, A0 equal to 0 is strictly needed. Now let Cn be the number of ways to split, uh, uh, split, uh, uh, you know, the uh, set 1 to n into uh, non-empty intervals. Okay. And then build, let us say, uh, a type structures on each interval and uh, build B structures on the set of intervals uh, if uh, uh, and, and if ABC represent the generative functions for A and B and C n then we have C of X is equal to B of A of X. Okay? So let us let us look at it again. So what we are going to do is that given an, an element set i partition into non-empty non intervals okay so uh, so the set is one to n right uh, set one to n uh, partition into non-empty intervals so let's say one to uh, let's say something one to five right and then uh, five plus uh, six to let's say nine right and then uh, ten to uh, twenty one etc right so we put it into non-empty intervals then for each part right you know one to five i'll put a, an air structure on this set then uh, I put another S structure on uh, uh, 6 to 10, and similarly I put uh, S structure on the remaining part. Now, then on the set of intervals, right, I put a B structure. Okay, so the, the, there is uh, how many ways I have uh, partitioned, 
uh, that many elements will be there. So each interval becomes a, an element of the set. And then on these intervals, I put a base shape. So this, if I am doing, then the generating function for the number of ways, uh, you know, uh, to build this structure, which is Cn, is the, uh, you know, let's say C of x, is the product, uh, is the composition of B uh, of A of x. That is, you substitute uh, uh, for x in B of x with A of x. So there is a, there is a bracket missing, I think. B of A of x. <clears throat> now, I will give you a sketch of the proof. Uh, so, let us see why this must be the case, right? So, the number of ways to build uh, type A structure, right, on, uh, let us say, K uh, disjoint intervals uh, is uh, A, right, A of uh, x whole dash K, right? Uh, I mean, type, uh, I, I should say type B structure, right? Uh, no. Type A structure on, uh, yeah, so the number of ways to build uh, type A structure on K disjoint intervals, right? Uh, is, uh, is the product of, uh, you know, for each interval, we want to take the product. But then, uh, you know, since we have exactly k intervals, if you assume, you know, you know, k to be fixed, then it is basically the coefficient of ax whole raised to k, because a of x, we are doing, uh, you know, for each of the k intervals, I am, I am, I am, I am building uh, uh, a structure. So, whatever is the number in that interval, I have the generative function will be a of x, right? So, a of x is the generative function for uh, building type structure right, for any uh, thing, right? Then, if you have i elements in that particular interval, it happens to be i elements, then the coefficient of x raised to i will give you the number of ways to build that, right? So, now if I take uh, the, so this is the, uh, you know, this is the nice thing about the generator, right? So, uh, so now since I have a of x, uh, you know, I build on the first one, then the second one I am building another again a of x, third one I am building again a of x, etc., right? I mean, a type a structures. So let us, uh, so the, uh, you know, the, the number of ways to build the type A structure on the K disjoint interval is the product of uh, the, uh, you know, generated functions each of them, right? So fx into fx into etc. K times. But then if I start with an n element set, right? If I start with an n element set, then the number of ways of doing this is the coefficient of x raised to n in A of x whole raised to K. And why is this? Because Because if I if I look at the coefficient of x raised to n, how the n came about, right? So if n has come out from this product of k times, it must have chosen some values like you know uh, n1, n2, etc. from uh, each of the uh, k times, right? So that is how I get coefficient as a summation of n1 plus n2 plus etc. is equal to n. The coefficient of x raised to n comes uh, in that way. So therefore, uh, if I have uh, I have taken from the first part, right? And the second part, and then the third part, etc., up to k part. Then uh, coefficient of x raised to n precisely says that you know number of ways of doing that when I have exactly uh, uh, let's say uh, two elements here, five elements here, seven elements here, etc., right? For a particular uh, choice, and for all possible such choices, right? So because we are looking at all possible ways to partition and then do this. Uh, a of x whole raised to k, coefficient of uh, x raised to n in a of x whole raised to k precisely gives the number of ways of doing this. But then we are going to build b structure on the k set, right? Now how 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 uh, many ways we can do that? That is precisely b k way, right? On a k element set, right? So because we are partitioning into exactly k intervals, and each interval I am considering as an element. And then I am going to put a B structure on this interval. So therefore, there is precisely B K ways to do that. So for any fixed K, right? I you know I have exactly B K ways to build a structure. Once I get the K uh, objects from of the type A from this, so there is precisely uh, precisely uh, B K ways to do that. But uh, for uh, 
uh, for all possible choices for the you know the splitting of a into this we get uh, you know we get it from uh, a of x uh, whole raised to k right to divide into exactly k parts and doing this and therefore uh, it is basically summation right uh, k greater than equal to 0 bk into a of x whole raised to k of course we are looking at the coefficient of uh, whatever in the appropriate value but now uh, which is the definition of b of a of x right so therefore uh, this is a more uh, you know this is a just a uh, sketch of the proof we can formally prove this but i don't want to go into uh, the details of this but uh, this i should uh, tell you enough to understand uh, why this I and mean, now of course you have to think about this a little bit to see how the generative function plays because without much experience how uh, you know a of x whole raised k i can use it as a uh, as a substitute for a number right uh, that uh, will not be immediately clear but uh, uh, think about it and then uh, get back to me now an example right so we have uh, n persons uh, standing in a queue to buy let's say uh, some books harry potter books or something right? people stand in queue to buy this now uh, you know they were uh, split at several places to non empty queues okay so some person comes like you know some clerk or somebody who comes and then says that okay you are standing in queue let us uh, uh, let us uh, 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 split uh, you into several parts by putting some uh, barricades or something in between then another guard uh, comes and then says that okay they they call some some subset of this uh, you know blocks of people right so they, they have several blocks of people right the queue is partitioned right into several blocks and then some uh, some another guard comes and then say that okay some subset of these guys and say that okay uh, let us all go to uh, my shop i will give you uh, faster access to the book you know here you are waiting in the queue so let me let me take some of you guys from uh, here and here then uh, uh, i will uh, i will uh, take you to my shop i will give you a better deal there right now how many ways this can uh, be done okay so let us uh, solve this so how do you solve this so we know that for the uh, uh, for the number of ways of uh, uh, number of ways of let us say uh, choosing uh, so number of ways of choosing so number of ways of uh, uh, choosing uh, uh, you know this uh, uh, first type uh, of things like that is basically split into several places and uh, what does that guard do that guard does nothing right so what the first guard does is to basically just split uh you know the q into several parts but he does nothing else right so he doesn't modify it anyway and the, he don't put any structures the queues are standing as it is so therefore there is uh, there is exactly one way to do nothing right once you split at several places you have the uh, you have the queues and uh, we do nothing right so you know when we were defining uh, this what we said is that right a and b the number of ways to build uh, type a structures on an, an element set and the num uh, you know uh, and and then uh, cn right was the number of ways to split n into uh, let's say non empty intervals and then build a structures on each in the interval right but here uh, what is the a structure there is nothing right because we are we just splitting the interval and doing nothing which is basically uh, the coefficient is one there is precisely one way to uh, do nothing with it so therefore i can say that ak is one for every k because uh, after splitting i don't do anything for whatever k i get k intervals and that's it so the generative function for uh, a of x is uh, x by 1 minus x because we have k greater than or equal to 1 and uh, and, and a0 is 0 right because uh, and if there is zero guys okay, there is no way to uh, split uh, we, we don't allow non-empty uh, 
right uh, success so therefore i0 is zero, zero so therefore i have x by 1 minus x which is a of x now uh, bk is uh, 2 raised to k because the uh, uh, y is that like we have uh, to choose uh, some subset of the k blocks right there is k uh, blocks and i want to choose some subset there is uh, even the subset can be empty he may not be able to call anybody right because maybe the other guard will come and say that okay you cannot shield our customer right so anyway so there is precisely uh, two raised to k uh, subsets possible right so of the k blocks so bk is two raised to k right we are just uh, choosing the subsets and then taking it to his uh, place so therefore b of x is 1 by 1 minus 2x right we saw this before right 2 raised to k is the sequence then we have b of x is 1 by 1 minus 2x and now we apply the uh, composition rule right so b of a of x is uh, 1 by now a of x is by uh, a of x is by x by 1 minus x b of x is by uh, b of x is 1 by 1 minus 2x so substitute for x with x by 1 minus 2x right a of x which is 1 by 1 minus 2x by 1 minus x which is 1 minus x by 1 minus 3x so therefore from this uh, i can get uh, 1 minus 3x will give 3 raised to n uh, uh, x raised to n and uh, then uh, you multiply with 1 minus x and look at the coefficient of x raised to n that is 2 into 3 raised to n minus 1 this is something you can verify for n greater than equal to 1 i have uh, this so we can verify that there is precisely 2 into 3 raised to n minus 1 ways to do this So here is a homework question. We have n children uh, who is standing in a line, and the line was split at several places, and one from each section, right? Uh, let's say uh, non-empty sections are non-empty, uh, was uh, made the leader of his team, right? Because each section is uh, uh, is non-empty, he can choose one person and then make him the leader of his team. Then show that. Uh, uh you know uh, let's say uh, ln is uh, equal to 1 by root 5 into 3 plus root 5 by 2 whole ratio n minus 3 minus root 5 by 2 whole ratio n counts the number of possible ways of uh, ways of uh, uh, ways of doing this okay so n children stand in a queue line was split at several places one from each section was made the leader of his team and the number of ways of doing this is counted by this formula and then uh, once you find this formula use it to find l2 l3 l4 and l5 okay let us look at a couple of more applications more from the you know uh, real world type questions so let us say that we have uh, you know we have three types of objects uh, are given right so let's say a b and c now given these three types of objects uh, we are told to pick, let's say, either uh, 0 or 1 or 2 A's, then uh, 0 or 1 uh, copies of B's, and uh, 0 or 1 copies of C. Okay? Then you can ask how many ways to pick K objects from here. Okay? So whatever uh, could be the objects. So three types of objects are there, type A objects, type B objects, and type C objects. And you are given, you, you can pick either 0 or 1 or 2 A. 0 or 1 B and 0 or 1 C. So, how many ways one can do this uh, for to picking uh, K objects? So, let us denote by BK the number of ways of uh, doing this. So, the generative function for uh, uh, you know this sequence BK is B of X summation BK into X raised to K. Now, what is precisely B of X? So let us look at so to count b of x i am going to use a slightly different method okay so if you look at uh, if you look at uh, the following right so i want to choose a okay so i'm going to look at the uh, function a x whole ratio 0 plus a x whole ratio 1 plus a x whole square then i take the product with b x whole ratio 0 plus b x whole ratio 1 and then take a product with c x whole ratio 0 plus c x whole ratio 1 now, when I take the product of this, right, 
uh, and look at the coefficient of x raised to let's say k for some number. So what is uh, x raised to k coefficient coming from? So if I choose x raised to k as let's say a x whole raised one, right? Then uh, b x uh, whole raised zero, right? And then c x whole raised one, right? Then the uh, uh, n will be two, right? And then uh, what does this choice represent? This choice represents that I have taken one a, right? Because a x whole raised one. Then I have taken uh, zero b's, b equals b x whole raised zero. And then I have taken exactly one type c of x, which is c x whole raised one, right? I could get to in another way maybe, right? I can choose uh, like a x raised to two, b x raised zero, and c x raised zero. So this way I can get to. Right. Similarly, uh, I, I can just to, uh, take two uh, A type objects. Similarly, I can pick uh, one B type object and one C type object and choose nothing from the first part, A x raised to zero. So this uh, tells you the choices of A are either zero, one, or two, right? Because A x power zero, A x power one, A x power two. Similarly, B x power zero, B x power one, and B x power two, right? So this will tell you how many A's are chosen, how many B's are chosen, how many C's are chosen, right? So you will get a square, right? Uh, x square, right? Uh, and uh, you know, and uh, b, uh, let's say, uh, b b square uh, uh, or 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 b x a square x square b x and uh, c x. Right? So I will get uh, x raised to four with uh, a square b c. Right? So I have to choose two a's, one b and one c. Now this is one possibility. So I have several such possibilities. But now how do you Put them together to find b of x, right? So observe that, like uh, you know, a x whole square says that the you know the choice is of a, and then I am taking two of them, right? X square tells it is two, and then a says that it is choosing a. But now it doesn't matter, right? We we want to find how many total ways to do this. So it doesn't matter. May, maybe I have taken two, but I just need to make sure that I get k only, right? So it doesn't matter whether I take two A's, one B and one C, or like uh, one A, two B, and you know, like in this case there is no two B, but uh, or or uh, one C. Uh, but uh, as far as the total is K, I am fine. So therefore, I, I can substitute for A to be one, right? I take the product one plus A X plus S square S square, one plus B X plus one uh, plus, uh, into one plus C X, and in this product. Let me put a equal to one, b equal to one, and c equal to one. So that says that, okay, I'm choosing two from the first part. You no, know, one from the second part, one from the third part, or two from the first part, zero from the second part, and zero from the, you know, like uh, uh, zero copies of b from uh, the third part, etc. Right, which is choosing one. This will tell you uh, the number of choices. So the generative function now I can get by substituting for a b c equal to one. In this, and then I will get it is one plus three x plus four x square plus three x cube plus x raised to four. And what is this uh, generative function uh, tells us? It says that I have the choice of uh, you know objects at most four of them, right? I mean k cannot be more than four, and uh, if k is equal to four, there is only one way to do that, right? And if k is equal to three, there are three ways to do it. If k is equal to two, there are four ways to do it. And uh, if k is equal to one, there is three ways to do it. And if k is equal to uh, uh, zero, right, uh, there is only one way to uh, do it. I right? choose nothing, right? So uh, this uh, tells us uh, uh, the solution for this. So uh, let us verify that, right? We, one can verify that also for uh, such an equation. So how many ways to choose? There are four different ways to choose two objects, right? So let us see how uh, this can be. I can choose two type A objects and nothing from uh, B or C. That is one way. Then I can choose one uh, type A object and one type B object. That is uh, the second way. Then I can choose one type A and one type C object, which is the third way. Then I can choose nothing from type A, but one B and one C. That is the fourth way. So there are the four different ways. So I get coefficient of x raised to two as four. Right. Similarly, one can verify for other values. So this is another nice way to uh, use energy functions. Here is another example. Okay. So here uh, you have an example of a sampling survey. 
So what is the sampling survey? So there are various uh, you know uh, professions of people. Uh, we have defined uh, uh, you know divided uh, the you know uh, the professions to different categories such as like you know we have teachers, we have lawyers, we have doctors, we have engineers, right? So you know farmers, all these kind of uh, 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 professions are uh, uh, listed, and then from each uh, uh of these n categories of people right uh, you know the, we have uh, we have uh, for men as well as for uh, m categories for the women right so out of these uh, different professions let us say that we fix n of them right some n of them for men and some m of them for uh, women right and then there are pa men available uh, in each of the n categories so uh, category i there is pa people right and QA uh, ladies are available in uh, each of the M categories. So, uh, you know, like uh, category 1, I have uh, Q1 people. Category M, I have QM people, right? So, uh, ladies. And from this, we need to choose people for survey, okay? So, we wish to conduct a uh, survey by choosing totally K people, where we distinguish people of the same gender, right? Men and women are to be same gender if and only if they belong to different categories i, I don't really want to distinguish uh, in the uh, same category i want to, i don't want to distinguish between men and uh, ladies so how many different ways to do this so uh, if you have really understood the generative function topic that we have covered so far you can uh, immediately see uh, the generative function for uh, this uh, you can come up with very clearly very easily right because uh, you know from the previous example you get uh, an idea about this also right so if i look at the function 1 plus x plus x square plus x to x raised to pi that tells there is for the ith category i have precisely uh, uh, you know uh, pi persons and then i can choose uh, you know some of this you know like I, I can choose either one of them none of them uh, two of them or uh, pi of them right at most pi are there so that is the choices from the first category similarly second category i have one plus x plus x raise x raised to p2 right so similarly one plus x raise x raised to pn so for the n categories i have the choices and uh, each one i write from the different categories i can choose uh, them to be uh, in, in in any uh, way and the product will tell you the number of ways of doing this so that for product i equal to one to n 1 plus x plus x square plus etc. x raised to pi tells the choices for the uh, uh, men from the category. And then product j equal to 1 to uh, m, 1 plus x plus etc. Q, x raised to q, uh, qj, right, uh, gives the choices for the ladies from each of the m categories. And this is the product which is the generative function g of x. So the coefficient of x raised to k from this generative function will tell you the number of uh, ways we want. And for, uh, you know, what you can do is to take some uh, numbers, you know, fix the numbers M and N and then uh, PA is accordingly and then uh, take the product and uh, find out the uh, coefficient of X raised to K for some K and then see whether it actually matches with your manual computation. So one can try this. Okay, so with that, uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, we will uh, 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 change to a different topic now. Uh, in the next class onwards, we will look at uh, uh, a slightly different type of generative function. Okay? So at the moment, uh, we will stop and continue in the next class. <laughs>